My name is Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. So today we're going to talk about this mysterious bust, uh, you know, head bust, not this bust, but a mysterious bust that appeared in a Portland City Park on Mount Tabor. And um, this, what happened is last year in Portland, folks uh, violently removed a statue of a prominent conservative figure from that spot uh, on uh, Mount Tabor. Now over the weekend of February 20th though, in its place, appeared an impressive and impeccably sculpted rendering by some anonymous artist in the form of a bust at that very spot. The figure, the figure, um, according to the engraved name and the bronze plaque that was also mounted there, is York. So apparently, who was York? Apparently, uh, he was a black man held in bondage, that's the term of the day, uh, by some member of the Lewis and Clark expedition. So he trekked alongside them for the 8,000 mile journey from St. Louis to the Pacific Northwest and back. And this uh, art installation is a kind of a guerrilla public art pleasant surprise. So we're gonna find out who was York, who was the artist, and what moved them to do this. That's what we'll look at today. So what I'm gonna to use today are the uh, Spellcaster's Tarot and uh, the cards I used uh, yesterday, which are the classic tarot, if we need clarifiers. Now the Spellcaster's Tarot also comes in this groovy box with the magnetic clip. It's got a really good um, handbook with it that's uh, by Melanie Marquis and uh, illustrated by Scott Murphy. And the illustrations in this deck are really, really detailed and uh, each, each card is a work of art in itself. So that's that. Plus we have the deck and I love this deck because it's clear on here when you have an up or a down card however, however it's positioned from looking at the back you, just, you look at these symbols and if the card is, is in this way that you know it's upright but if it's like this then obviously you know that it's in reverse and uh, for some ridiculous reason that it appeals to me although I'd never ever uh, really use that uh, but anyway the art on these is amazing and they go right to the edge of the cards which is very um, um, useful because it just really gives you a clear picture of everything there. And I'll show you these cards um, right down here on this deck before we get started. So what I do before each of these uh, readings is I just uh, do a little meditation beforehand to um, include the cards and maybe knock out any uh, bad spirits that might uh, might influence the, uh, the reading. And uh, heck, who knows if that works, but it seems to work for me. Put these uh, clarifiers off to the side over here. And then I'll show you these Spellcasters tarot cards. They're amazing. So you can see from the art here, there's lots of detail. There's lots of thought. They follow pretty much the Rider Waite uh, symbology uh, of the cards. And like I said before, this is not a bad way to uh, mix up your cards before reading uh, if you're so inclined. Now, I like the shuffle. So we're going to do a little riffle shuffle here for a bit until these cards feel like they're ready to go. Now I've had these for a long time. One of the first decks I got, I probably got 25 or more decks of these tarot cards. And they're all not only uh, amazing art, but they've got a little history and it kind of shows you uh, how this um, voodoo uh, progressed from the uh, early appearances of tarot as just playing cards to, um, to being uh, used for divination. So when you collect a series of cards, uh, yeah, you know, they're kind of thoughtfully collected in order. When did they first appear and what were people looking at at the time? So we'll break these up. When we feel like they're nice and shuffled, we'll approach the subject. And I want to say, um, who was York? Who was the artist of that sculpture? And uh, what moved them to do this? Um, so that's kind of the focus of what we'll look at uh, in this read. I think these are about done. I think these are good to go. I might give it a couple more just to be sure. Sometimes I do like to, I feel a need to just kind of mix these up on the fly like this for some reason. 
and uh, we'll give a little bit of this. You know, the wonderful thing about these is at least they're uh, amusing to look at, even if you don't uh, agree with the uh, interpretation. A little bit of this. One more shuffle, and then we'll spread them out, and we'll do a Celtic cross for these questions about York and the artist and uh, what moved them to, uh, to make this, uh, this uh, installation. Six cards for the first part of the Celtic cross, and then we'll take another four off the top of the deck to further define it. And if we need clarifiers, we'll use these great um, classic tarot cards for that. So right off the bat, we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Easy enough. I mean, who couldn't do that? Anybody can do that. Now, we'll put these to the side, and uh, we'll take these six cards, and we'll start in on the first question, which will be, who was York? Who was York? Now, even though they've made a, a, a bust of a head that represents York, I don't think that there's actually uh, any photographic evidence of who York was. So let's try to define that. Let's try to divine uh, that. Who is York? So the first card off the top is the Nine of Cups. Now this Nine of Cups is very interesting, as a matter of fact, especially in light of, of the question that we're asking. So this is a, a dark genie who's appeared above the cups. And the Nine of Cups talk to you about having really uh, everything that you need to, to make something happen. And uh, so certainly um, this fellow, you could look at this a couple of ways. This fellow had what he needed to make this journey. Of course, he didn't have a choice. He was, uh, he was uh, enslaved by someone on that expedition. But I guess at some point, even if you're doing something that's not your choice, you have to pull together whatever skills you have to make your life better and therefore your, uh, your, the whole process better. So who was York? York was a genie for the time, you could say. So this Nine of, Swords, Nine of Cups, like I said, talks to having everything you need um, and feeling good about that to make your, uh, your journey. But um, this Nine of Cups is going to have a challenge, and the challenge to that is the Seven of Cups. And the Seven of Cups is illusion and delusion, uh, or having lots of choices, again, uh, to pull from to have a successful um, journey. Um, so this Seven of Cups is, um, for me speaks to kind of you know what might have been told to these people who had to to go and carry the bags uh kill the food along the way clear the brush make this insane journey across the country at a time when something like that was it wasn't even uh, very imaginable so seven of cups is the challenge perhaps uh, the illusion that they may have uh, uh passed on to the people that they forced to go on this trip and also um, the su supplies, the everything they needed, the knowledge they needed to make a successful trek. So that's the challenge of the Nine of Cups is this Seven of Cups. Now the base of the reading, it just kind of speaks to the overall spirit of what uh, is going to be accomplished here. So this is the Five of Cups. So the Five of Cups, as you can see here, is lost. You've got three cups here of spilled uh, wine or spilled blood, and uh, but he, this this fella, this figure has two cups remaining. And so this depiction on this card is very, um, makes you kind of think about that uh, Lewis and Clark expedition and all the uh, the obstacles they had to overcome to get there. That was the base of the reading. I would say that's clearly the journey itself. In the past, remember this is in the past of something that happened in the past. So in the past is the Page of Cups. And the Page of Cups, and this is a very illustrative card. So the Page of Cups talks to bringing something to the game. Now in the cards you've got the 1 through 10 of a normal deck and then in the tarot cards you've got the Page, Knight, Queen, and King. The uh, King being the most of course powerful and the Page is really someone who just brings information to court. So in the past this um, this speaks to bringing maybe um, the thought to court and if you look really closely in the background here you've got a couple of fish jumping up and I tell you, this this tells us that this page is going to bring his talent for survival, in my opinion, anyway, uh, along this journey. That's what's in the past of this Celtic cross. Now, in the sky, in other words, what can you hope for? What, what would be the, the something that you want to happen in this journey? And here we have the King of Wands. And, you know, wands speak to um, uh, movement, action, 
uh, making something uh, happen out of almost nothing. And the king of any suit is always the master of his element. So this king is the master of uh, making things happen. So who was York? This is uh, kind of defining him here, and I think it's pretty interesting. The um, likely outcome for a general uh, look at this fellow is going to be the star. How amazing that he appears as a prominent figure in that Mount Tabor, uh, Portland uh, City Park. So the star. And the star just tells us that this is a, a hopefully someone who is going to garner attention. They're going to shine in their endeavor. They've got a, an even keel. They've got one foot on the land and one foot on the water and ready to make decisions and shine uh, for what they've done. So who is York in this part of the reading? He's someone who uh, brought with him a lot uh, to, to, uh, to the success of the journey. Um, maybe he was deluded into not understanding how much of a difficulty this would be. Um, the base of the reading was, like we said, the journey itself. The Page of Cups is perhaps who York was in the past, known as someone who would bring something to offer that others would want, as these uh, two here would, would like to have this fellow's uh, cup. And um, in the sky, the King of Wands, uh, as we talked about, being the master of uh, making things happen. And as it turns out, in this small way, he has become a star. But let's try to zoom in on who was your, perhaps more personally, perhaps more personally. So we're going to take a card off the top here for the self of York. A very interesting card to get. This is the Fool. The Fool is zero in the tarot deck, so he's the beginning of the journey. He doesn't have anything. The next card in the Major Arcana of the Tarot is number one, and so the Fool is just stepping off, not knowing what he's getting into. He's brought what he needs along with him. He's just depending on uh, the good uh, 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 will of everything that he's uh, put together in his past and depending on the folks that he's uh, that are taking him on this journey. So that's the fool. Who was who was York? He was he was at the beginning of the journey. He's on this journey. But what is the environment of York? The environment he was in at that moment and again, these are depictions of a journey, no doubt. And uh, so he was someone who was going to keep um, the balls in the air. This is the Two of Pentacles. And so the Two of Pentacles speaks to just that, keeping things balanced, keeping things going. This poor fellow, and I can imagine it was the same for York, he's trying to, to, to walk on a log, balance on a log. He's got trusty companions bringing him a sack with probably more provisions. You've got modes of transportation in the ships and uh, that were used in this travel. And he was the fellow in this environment who needed to keep things up in the air. Balanced. The hopes and the fears for York was the Eight of Cups and the hopes and the fears. And the Eight of Cups speaks to having to leave something behind. And you can see that this, this uh, figure in this Eight of Cups card from the Spellcaster's deck is uh, looking at everything that he's, that he's had to let go. He's got a spilled cup here. He's got all these empty cups here. He's got one little cup left in the, in the uh, moonlit night to finish this uh, this uh, expedition. And then the likely outcome is the Emperor. You know, this is a, an amazing card uh, to get for this uh, nondescript uh, person who we just barely know about. Um, he was, no doubt, a, a shining um, uh, figure in that journey. The Emperor speaks to someone who is in charge of what's happening in their uh, kingdom. And even though he may have been indentured, and even though he may have been owned, and he was uh, forced to go on this trek, I feel like by the end, he was someone who everybody looked up to as uh, knowing uh, what uh, had to be done and getting it done. No clarifications are needed here. This seemed like a very direct, very um, pointed uh, explanation of who was York. So we're gonna take this down, and we're gonna start again quickly with another Celtic cross, which will this will be the first time I've done that, and we're going to address who was the artist. Who was the artist who actually decided to erect this uh, bust in place of that uh, uh, the one that was taken down? You know, they were taking down busts from all over the country of uh, Confederate uh, generals and and um, and conservative figures uh, that uh, so many people felt oppressed by or obliged to pay homage to when if you really dig into who they were it wasn't exactly 
um, the wonderful uh, figure that you would expect. So we're going to talk about the artist, who we don't know who the artist is. Just like York, the artist of this, uh, this bust that was erected in Portland is unknown. He's known only to him, and he must have had help to put those that up because it's a beautiful um, installation. Who is the artist? Who is the artist having to do with this installation of the bust of York? We'll do another uh, six cards. And hope that we have an answer for this. The last time, just now, that seemed very clear. And uh, here we go, off and running. Who is this artist uh, having to do with York? The Nine of Swords speaks to dread and loss and worry and uh, praying over uh, the, the terrible situation that you might be in. So you can see these Nine Swords are lied down in a ceremonial um, position while someone here weeps or prays or studies over this this problem uh, and I always feel like when you show a, a, a canine figure in the car that this is a conscience hopefully this is a conscience that's guiding um, this uh, person so I would say this this artist or who knows it could have been a team of artists um, are, are, are folks who are deeply moved by the situation that we have obviously you wouldn't need a psychic to tell you that would you now the challenge to that the challenge to that card is the Nine of Pentacles. And the Nine of Pentacles uh, talks to, and you can see them hopefully embedded into this, this sturdy wall right here, these Nine Pentacles. And uh, this, as a matter of fact, is a lovely park uh, in the background here. And, um, and we show this fountain and this uh, person supporting this little squirrel. So the challenge to um, these problems that this, this uh, Nine of Swords is worrying over Completely appropriate and um, a little uh, uh, intuitive, a little uh, predictive that this uh, scene would be in a park. So Nine of Pentacles talks about having everything you need, but wanting to to uh, maybe do more uh, in this regard. So the base of this reading is the is strength, and look at that. Strength speaks to us of being able to tame the beast uh, through. Through, although you're a gentle soul. So this, this uh, figure here obviously wouldn't uh, win a battle between this uh, lion, but she's been able to tame the battle. She's been able to calm the beast and, uh, and bring it to some sort of enlightenment. So that's the base of this reading. In the past for the artist is the emperor. So perhaps this person had been someone who was significant uh, in their field and able to uh, command um, others to, to get this project done. In the sky, we've got the Queen of Cups. And the Queen of Cups talks to us about passion. Cups are passion, emotion, and, um, and caring. And so this uh, Queen of Cups is holding on to that cup. She's got it covered with her hand, but she's looking up, and she's, her expression just tells you that this is about to be revealed. A flood of passion is about to come forth. She's got her toe in the water to judge the, um, the mood, but this queen, she's not a king. She doesn't have all power, but she's pretty powerful. And that's in the sky. And the likely outcome for this part of this reading is in the Two of Swords. And the Two of Swords about, talks about making a decision, going one way or the other with uh, truth and justice uh, and your conscience uh, as your guides. And uh, this uh, Two of Swords is taking a step uh, has lit the way with a small candle uh, towards the outcome. And now we're going to see uh, more specifically the self of this artist is a Two of Cups. And the Two of Cups talks about celebrations, partnerships, uh, working together. And so definitely, I would guess that someone had to work together to get this done. And it's interesting that these figures are a black man and a white man uh, working together. Could this be York and a representation of the artist or the artist? who made this happen. Well, that's the self of the artist in this uh, question of York. The uh, environment is the center, Seven of Pentacles. And the Seven of Pentacles is looking at your crop and wondering if you've done enough. And so this uh, Spellcaster's Tarot, they've even got some crystals in here uh, tending to their, their uh, 
crop and that's surrounded by those seven of pentacles for a good outcome, hoping, nourishing, ensuring that you've done enough. So it was mounting that sculpture enough. Now the hopes and the fears then is going to be this Knight of Pentacles. And the Knight of Pentacles is, is interesting in this deck. The Knight of Pentacles typically talks about uh, bringing forth value or money or something uh, useful. And in this case, it's an extremely large pentacle carried on the back of a squirrel. Now, I'm not sure the significance of squirrels in uh, divination, but uh, this squirrel, although they're uh, miniature in, in actuality, in this regard, if this squirrel was York, he was a giant towards the accomplishment of the um, Lewis and Clark uh, expedition. So that's the hopes and fears. And the hopes and fears then would probably be that this uh, York, this sculpture, uh, also uh, moves uh, in some way the forward, the movement towards equality. But then the final outcome for this artist is the Five of Wands. And the Five of Wands talk to us about, um, you know, battle, but not bloody battle. Kind of um, discussion. These guys are, are look like they're playing. They uh, challenge themselves with knocking this beehive and and probably uh, disturbing this nest of uh, uh, either hornets or bees. And uh, but they're done so in a playful way. So they want to shake things up, not in a deadly way, but you know, kind of get everybody involved and uh, towards uh, the uh, the outcome. And it could cause some stinging, but uh, I think it uh, it will be worthwhile. So that's my read on York. Who was York? And um, why did was that statue erupted? Yeah. <laughs> erupted? No, erected for him in uh, Portland. So I'm Mark. This is my journey through tarot. That was a very interesting double Celtic cross read on both the artist and the subject, York. Both unknown really, except by the artist's interpretation of, of York through that bust erect, erect, erected in uh, Mount Tabor, Portland. Thanks so much for coming by. You don't know how much I appreciate it. Stop by again. I'll be right here. Ciao for now. Mm -hmm.